that I feel like in practice, I feel like we have a lot of moments where uh, we want 505. So, you know, that's a great time to practice, you know, change of pace. We do a lot of fast break stuff for a quarter. So, you know, I start off with the ball every time, you know, some of the point guards. So, you know, as I'm jumping the ball up the court, you know, the defense is getting back. So uh, I work on being fast right there. You know, if it's nothing right there, then I uh, pull it back out to try to run a set like that. And, you know, just little things like that could translate to the game very very well, you know, not uh, get a rebound or something or fast break, you know, I can sprint up the floor and if I don't see nothing, I can easily, you know, pull it out and, you know, run some offense and that translates from practice. You know, I work, we work on that all the time. You know, it may not look like it, but, you know, uh, I try to work on my stuff within, you know, our practice plan. So that's a part of me working on my game and, and translating to the game. Is it only, is it only fast break situations where that's kind of applied or is it maybe in ball screen uh, scenarios too? Uh, ball screens too, but I feel like more so that came with maturity, you know, as me watching film and stuff, seeing, you know, me coming at one speed, you know, not making the right reads. But so I feel like that part of my game came with maturity and I definitely slowed down, made the right reads off the ball screens lately. And then, and last one for me, I guess, just more of a self-evaluation question since moving into the starting lineup, I guess, how do you feel like you, you've evolved as a floor leader? Uh, I feel like I evolved very well. You know, the guys respect my word. You know, they respect what I'm saying out there. So I feel like, you know, my role as starting point guard has really, you know, uh, weared off on the guys. You know, they look at me for answers sometimes. I still look at them for answers sometimes. So, you know, it's working very well. Next. Doug, I, I think someone mentioned uh, after the Michigan State game, you were feeling under the weather. Um, but as you're looking back to that game, uh, what are some of the things you're emphasizing? What are some of the things the team is emphasizing offensively? Uh, days leading up to that game, you know, uh, I came down with a sickness. You know, I had to go to the hospital because, you know, I didn't have enough fluid in my body. So, you know, I was very, very dehydrated. I didn't practice for three days. So, you know, that was tough coming off three days, you know, getting a lot of rest, getting a lot of fluids and coming to play in that, in that type of environment. So, but, you know, I thank my guys for believing in me. Uh, they didn't tell me to sit one off. You know, when I told them that I was coming to the game, because I came the day of, you know, I was in the hospital the, the morning of the game. I came the same day. So when I showed up in the uh, conference room, the film room, you know, they all clapped it up. We all had a good, you know, rejo rejoining. So it was very great. But, you know, that game just showed, you know, our toughness and stuff like and stuff like that. Uh, the fact that we could come there, you know, we're not at our 100 percent and we can still compete at a very high level. Uh, we know we know next time when we see them, you know, it's gonna be a better game than that. Well, I guess that was more serious than I expected. Are, are you feeling it seems like you're feeling better, but are you feeling better? Yeah, I'm still getting there. I'm getting there. Hey, Doug. Uh... As you made the jump from from high school to college and, and, and the attention on your games has grown, uh, has there been any challenges in, in dealing with kind of those any of those public pressures, whether it be, you know, fans or on social media or anywhere else kind of maybe criticizing your play at times? Uh, I, no, I feel like no, because, you know, I've always had uh, uh, critics, you know, criticize my game since I was young. So, you know, I just embrace it. You know, I look at it. You know, sometimes I even take it into consideration. You know, if they say I'm, my jump shot is not working, I go in the gym and work on it even more. So, you know, stuff like that don't get to me. I just laugh. Me and my mom usually just laugh at that stuff. And sometimes, you know, if it's if it's good enough, I take it into consideration. So your mom sees some of I mean, yeah, I can't imagine a, a mother would maybe have a different uh, – not – laughing is good, but I, I'm a little surprised. Old school mom, so a lot of stuff. It's really hard to cock her skin, so okay. I get I get that from her. So a little, like, you know, you can say you can say the most absurd things. It still won't get to me. I can still laugh at all. So yeah, gotcha. All right, thanks. No problem. Hey Doug, um, you talked about Kobe being a mentor a little bit so far this season. How has he used a kind of lead by example approach, and how has that helped you? Uh, you know, he's been in the fire before. You know. Uh, he, he has an approved role from last year. You know, my role this year is, I mean, it was at, at first, it started off similar to his, but now, you know, it took, it took a bigger role. But, you know, he's just telling me what to expect going to, you know, each each atmosphere because, you know, he's been there. So just he just always want me to stay poised, just lead them, lead them, lead the way. 
me and him, he want me and him to back court. So as long as me and him on the same accord, you know, we had a workout last night together, you know, just honing in that chemistry, just keep just keep locking in together. So we always on the same page uh, to the point where, you know, he can run a one, I can run a two, I can run a two, he can run, I can run a one, he can run a two, stuff like that. So, you know, we have a great, great chemistry on and off the court to the point where, you know, I feel comfortable going to him about anything. And he feel comfortable coming to me about anything. So I'm glad we have that chemistry and hopefully we can keep building from that. Yeah, Doug, uh, Hunter told us a little bit, uh, obviously not getting all the way into the game plan, but talking to us about the the importance of slowing down Chris Murray and those sorts of things uh, when they have the ball. I wonder offensively, um, what are sort of ways to to exploit Iowa, uh, the zone, and the things they like to do? Um, what, what are you looking at going into this matchup? Uh, I feel like they... They have an advantage in terms of height, you know, and we have advantage in terms of quickness. So I feel like, you know, if we get downhill, penetrate the gaps and make them collapse and kick out to our shooters, I feel like, you know, that can give us an advantage in the game. But, you know, more so just get into the gaps, attack those tall guys, attack those taller, taller guys and just create for others. I feel like that's our game plan for sure. And make sure we rebound, rebound, rebound. How much has that been emphasized lately after the, uh, the start of the year? Uh, as you can see, you know, we, we put this little cone up on the uh, on the basket where, you know, no shots go in and all rebounds. Uh, we spent like 30 minutes or so on that on that drill alone. And ever since then, that's been part of our practice plan, you know, since 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 it, since it's been a problem during the season. So, you know, we we've definitely made a great improvement as a rebounding team, you know, and, you know, coach is going to emphasize it every day. That's, that gets us extra possessions. That limits the other teams' extra possessions. So we got to continue to uh, improve and be a great rebounding team.